Welcome back to the Skylanders Ultimate Nightmare series, where I will play a solo run with every Skylander on Nightmare Mode to see which Skylanders and which of their upgrade paths are better. To start out this video, we've got Zap on the Tesla Dragon upgrade path, which gives him upgrades to his Lightning Breath moves. Lightning Breath bounces off of enemies' objects and walls, Wave Attack does increased damage, and Lightning Breath does even more increased damage, or what you'll find here. Now going into this run, I wasn't a huge fan of Zap. I think it's kind of weird that he's got two mobility moves, and because of that he has kind of low DPS and only one major option for attacking. The Wow Pow for having Series 2 Zap, as you'll see me using, allows you to ride the wave and then do a big slam belly flop on the ground, doing damage to everyone around you. I found this to be pretty helpful because the move knocks enemies back, as well as just a tertiary attack on its own, even without the wow pow. But something you'll see me do often is ride the wave and shoot electricity from the primary attack while doing so, which is not something I knew you could do before going into this. But having that third move kind of begs the question of why Zap even has this secondary attack where he leaves slime on the ground. If you can move around the map while riding the wave and attack while doing that, then why would you ever use the sea slime? You can electrocute it to damage enemies, and whether or not you do, it still slows them down, but I don't really know. Two mobility moves seems kind of redundant. Not to mention that his soul gem is pretty bad. It allows you to regenerate health in water, but for this run I'm not going to be going into any elemental zones, so it's pretty much useless. You'll see throughout the run that a lot of the time my strategy just involves staying at a distance, shooting electricity, and running away using the slime attack. It is worth noting that the slime is actually faster than the wave, so if you are desperate to get out of a scenario or into one, use that move. You can see me trying to utilize the wow pow to deal damage to all these enemies at once because it does hit everyone around you but even still, the damage output is not the best. Zap's got great mobility, but that is kind of it. This does of course mean if you're sliding on the ice, you can just use secondary attack to dash away without slipping at all. And that becomes very handy for this section of the level, which is the only part in the game where you fight enemies on ice, if I remember correctly. I feel like they could have done much more with that. Later down the level we find ourselves in a water elemental zone, which does definitely help offset Zap's biggest weakness of the low damage output. Combined with his already good mobility, like I've been saying, allows him to make quick work of this area. However, the armored Mohawk Cyclopses are actually kind of difficult because it takes several hits to knock the armor off of them, and you can't stun them until you do. I tried a little bit to use the tertiary attack and just launch the projectile on its own to see if that would deal some damage from a distance, but using the primary attack is usually just better than that. The first hard section in Secret Vault of Secrets is coming up now, and although it is usually very difficult, a lot of the time the problem is when characters can't really run away from the attacks, so I feel like Zap should do just fine here. It may take a while, but as long as we win, it counts as a win, so... And we can very easily run around the enemies here and just make them miss over and over while we go for the bombs and deal huge damage that way. And same goes for the Archean Shield Juggernaut here. You just have to be careful in case one of these guys throws a bomb off screen and you dash into it, I guess. The Jousters on the bridge pretty much always cause problems no matter who you're playing. But here, I was able to just run away, bait their shields down, and then attack them while they were down. It took quite a while, but I did live in the end. For slower characters, this part is usually pretty hard, but I can just run up to the bombs and deal damage that way. So the water elemental zone does help a lot, but it doesn't make me invincible, I still have to be careful of that. These enemies ended up barely being able to even move, they were just stuck on the slime getting zapped over and over. Not many enemies in the game will actually do this though, because the big ones that don't move, it's hard to get slime underneath their feet. And that's the kind of enemy you'd want to target with this strategy. This huge group of enemies here seems like the perfect opportunity to use my wave slam attack. Just a couple of these should be able to take out at least the grenade generals, because they have low health. 
And then I can pick off the straggler. I get clipped by the backswing of the Maze Major here, which I think should not happen. And then the enemies follow up with the good old reliable Grenade General attack. I have to play very careful here due to being one hit away from death. So I decide to move around the map quickly and just get in small attacks when I find the opportunity. No risk for another enemy to hit me. Not too long after that, we're able to take out the last few enemies, and of course the Chompy Mage boss fight afterwards is pretty easy. Right around here, at this point in the run, you can kind of see me get into my groove. My new strategy for dealing with enemies is to use the slime to run away from them, and then turn around and start riding the wave, shooting electricity, and slamming into the ground when I get near, and then repeating by running away with the slime afterwards. Doing that causes the enemies to get stuck on the slime while you're running away, and then when you're coming towards them you go for big damage. The Trollholm Security Castle ended up being quite overwhelming, so I kinda just ran through, hit a couple enemies, and then took another lap around. Doing this ensured I would never double back and accidentally run into an attack of an enemy who I was running away from before. But I didn't account for getting sniped right as I took out all the grenade generals. So here we're doing the Slime Serpent Path now. This upgrade path allows you to create more sea slimes. It automatically electrifies all sea slimes you put out, and enemies take even more damage while stuck on the electrified sea slimes. In my opinion, this upgrade path is quite a bit worse than the other one, the Tesla Dragon. The reason being, automatically electrifying all sea slimes is not super useful. It was not difficult to do this before. You just have to turn around and zap it once. Enemies taking more damage while standing in it, it increases from like 4 damage to 6. It's not a huge difference. I don't think most players are going to use this move for the damage anyways. The most helpful upgrade is creating more sea slimes. On the other upgrade path, you're able to create about one move's length of slime. So if you use the move and keep holding the button until the duration ends, that much slime is how much you can have on the field. It doesn't matter if you do it in two or three small bursts, but that's the amount. And with this upgrade path, you can have about twice as much as that. But yet again, I don't really see how useful this is, because I feel like the one puddle of slime was enough to do the trick. I can see this being pretty helpful in two-player, because you can just run around the map and trap all the enemies in your slime instead of dealing damage while your partner takes them all out with some big hitting moves, which Zap does not have. However, we're going to try and make it work. Now, I have been kind of negative on Zap throughout this video, but it was around this point in the run where I started to actually have a lot of fun with him. Being able to zoom all around the map real quick is pretty fun, and even though he has two mobility moves, they do actually kind of have different niches, like I was explaining before. The Sea Slime is much faster and pretty instantaneous when you use it, and the Wave Ride is good for pushing enemies and for the Wave Slam ability, dealing damage to enemies in a group. But if you're not super familiar with Zap like I wasn't before, they really look like they just overlap each other in usefulness. I can't complain too much though, because at the very least it's not another useless flight move, which are my least favorite. And part of the reason I like doing this challenge so much is I give every single character a very fair shot at seeing if they're any fun to play, and Zap actually took that opportunity and changed my mind about him. I'm hoping this happens with many more of the characters I'm going to be playing eventually, but only time will tell. Here's an example of an enemy where the electrified sea slimes doing extra damage is actually quite useful, because you can have him teleport right on top of them and take a bunch of damage while he's just standing there getting ready to use his next move. Once again, the Mohawk Cyclopses with armor are quite hard to take out, although the electric sea slime does actually help quite a bit with this, which I didn't try last time. And here I ran into a bit of a problem with Zap. If you get stuck by the enemies, it is kind of difficult to get out. You can use the tertiary attack which does push them, but it's not always possible, of course. Luckily I was able to survive and end up beating this section. But that was a really close call. And yet again I'm able to use Zap's superior mobility to just run around these enemies while getting quick pot shots in when I can. And also them attacking each other helps quite a bit. It can be a bit tricky, but sitting these jousters on top of your slime does actually damage them quite nicely, but I wasn't really able to pull it off here. I once again had to resort to letting them chase me down this path while I got in one or two quick shots after they put their shields down. At this section, I was trying to use zap speed to grab some bombs and move in and out, but I accidentally activated this lock puzzle and threw the bomb at the same time, and after beating the puzzle, the enemy was dead, so I guess I hit him. These bombs are really helping out with my low damage output problem. 
especially on nightmare mode because enemies deal more damage and these count as the enemy's attacks so overall I really enjoyed playing as Zap although he doesn't have the greatest damage output as I've been saying I really like speedy characters Tesla Dragon is definitely the way to go in my opinion I don't think the upgrades on Slime Serpent are really anything you're gonna be missing out on if only he had an upgrade that could stop a scenario like this 